There was and is absolutely nothing holy about these wars which are primarily to plunder, slaughter, rape, subjugate and rob other human beings of their wealth, produce, freedom and dignity. Muhammadan Muslim states and tribes attacked other non-Muslim groups to achieve these objectives. Although Islamic jurisprudence laid down regulations for the treatment of slaves, however, incredible and heinous abuses have occurred throughout the history of Muhammadan Islam. By the Middle Ages, the Arab, Arabic word Muhammad was a little dog. Abid was in general used to denote a black slave, while the word Mamluk referred to a white slave. Ibn Khaldun, 1332-1406, the preeminent Islamic medieval historian and social thinker wrote, the Negro nations are as a rule submissive to slavery because they have attributes that are quite similar to dumb animals. It should also be noted that black slaves were castrated based on the assumption that the blacks had an ungovernable sexual appetite. When the Fatimid Caliphate came to power in Egypt, they slaughtered all the tens of thousands of black military slaves and raised an entirely new slave army. Some of these slaves were conscripted into the army at age 10. From Persia to Egypt to Morocco, slave armies from 30,000 to up to 250,000 became commonplace. The Islamic slave trade took place across the Sahara Desert, from the coast of the Red Sea, and from East Africa across the Indian Ocean. The Trans-Sahara trade was conducted along six major slave routes. Just in the 19th century, for which we have more accurate records, 1.2 million slaves were brought across the Sahara into the Middle East, as well as a further 450,000 down the Red Sea and 442,000 from the East African coastal ports. That is a total of 2 million black slaves just in the 1800s. At least 8 million more were calculated to have died before reaching the Muslim slave markets. A comparison of the Islamic slave trade to the American slave trade reveals some extremely interesting contrasts. While two out of every three slaves shipped across the Atlantic were men, the proportions were reversed in the Islamic slave trade. Two women for every man were enslaved by the Muslims. While the mortality rate of slaves being transported across the Atlantic was as high as 10%, the percentage of slaves dying in transit in the Trans-Sahara and East African slave market was a staggering 80 to 90 percent. While almost all the slaves shipped across the Atlantic were for agricultural work, most of the slaves destined for the Muslim Middle East were for sexual exploitation as concubines in harems and for military service. While many children were born to the slaves in the Americas, the millions of their descendants are citizens in Brazil and the United States of today. Very few descendants of the slaves that ended up in the Middle East survive. While most slaves who went to the Americas could marry and have families, most of the male slaves destined for the Middle East were castrated and most of the children born to the women were killed at birth. It is estimated that possibly as many as 11 million Africans were transported across the Atlantic, 95% of which went to South and Central America, mainly to Portuguese, Spanish and French possessions. Only 5% of the slaves ended up in what we call the United States today. However, a minimum of 28 million Africans were enslaved in the Muslim Middle East. Since at least 80% of those captured by Muslim slave traders were calculated to have died before reaching the slave markets, it is believed that the death toll from 1,400 years of Arab and Muslim slave tra raids into Africa could have been as high as 112 millions. When added to the number of those sold in the slave markets, the total number of African victims of the Trans-Saharan and East African slave trade could be significantly higher than 140 million people. What is obscene about this whole subject is the Mohammedan Muslim and Arab culture of denial regarding their complicity in the African slave trade, as well as the ignorance of black Muslims about the reality of their past and present conditions. The statistics and reports above
are based upon the log books kept at the African slave ports, ship logs, travelers' reports, eyewitness accounts, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, the facts and reality of Mohammedan Islam's complicity in the slave trade and their inhuman depravity are infinitely more devastating, more staggering, and more incomprehensible than all the nightmare fictions in the world.